you guys what's happening. So, getting some airbag codes on this 2012 uh, Jeep Compass. So, um, I already know what it is. So, I'll put down the codes in the description what it is. Um, where my scan tool on it? Pretty cool scan tool that does SRS, but the issue is the clock spring. And if you're not familiar with the clock spring, it's it's what creates contacts between all your little devices, buttons in here, and sends it back to the actual ECU, the computer. Um, the issue is like, because you need to be able to turn your steering wheel, you know, you can't actually have wires that just twist around like this, frame back and forth. So you have like a, a series of contacts that go around in a circle like this. It's right there. So it's called a clock spring. And inside here, there's a bunch of contacts. Um, I don't know if this, this, this wasn't very expensive, but uh, the dealer, I mean, typically charges over $1,000 from this. Um, it's not super difficult, but it's also not super e easy. You need to have a, uh, like a steering wheel, steering wheel puller to get it off. All right, so on this car, I've actually had quite a few issues with uh, different things up here. Like, I think there was a of water spill up here or something spill up here, maybe. Uh, because in one of my other videos, this, I had a bad um, turn signal indicator. And because the windshield wipers go through it, anytime you'd actually do like the, this turn signal, it would actually do the windshield wipers. So there's suddenly something going on up here. Multiple errors. So I'm getting the airbag warning. And um, it's intermittent. So it's definitely, it comes, kind of comes on and off. Uh, but yeah, there's a couple of screws, a couple 10 millimeter screws behind the steering wheel one there one here it's pretty basic this whole thing should just pop forward but the main thing what you want to do is you want to make sure that you uh, unplug the battery for like 15 20 minutes maybe 30 minutes you want to totally discharge this airbag um you know because if you create like a short or something like that you, you get you send power to the airbag it's going to go off yeah i, think I forgot yeah. this thing was like 50 bucks or 40 bucks on, on ebay so i don't expect it to be the highest quality but the factory one was like 600 bucks or some crazy price so guarantee you're gonna be out probably a thousand or twelve hundred dollars to take it to the dealership. Yeah, dealing with airbags always makes me nervous. So this should just come off. Just get those two screws off. You know, just the fact that the thing might blow up in your face, I don't want to be right behind it. <laughs> yeah, this, this tight with the screws too. See, I mean, they got the, not a lot of wiggle room for those wires. All right. Yeah, really, this thing is not like uh, keyed. I'm gonna make a mark so I know which side it was on. I have the airbag off, and I noticed that there's no holes for like a puller. I mean, I do. I have multiple different kinds of pullers, but uh, yeah, what's that? A like cast aluminum or zinc? Or what is that? I guess it could be metal, steel, some some, some sort of cast product. Um, all right, so bolt here. I got to figure out the size for that. So it's a 13 millimeter socket. So it was actually Loctited in there, so. It's making me a little nervous. I didn't want to break it off. Um, but what's weird is that... I mean, is this a special kind of steering wheel puller? You need to get that off? Should it normally come off by hand? Like, normally I'm used to one with the, the three different holes. So, um, it's definitely an odd puller, but... So this one can be three or two. You know yeah, I dig, dig it where my puller is in there. So I'm gonna link down below for the right one, but yeah, it's... Has like a couple of little teeth on it, like uh, kind of like a crochet hook. Um, all right, see so if we can kind of get off with this. All right, that's a little nerve wracking, man. I got it off. I just don't want to break any parts. All right, there it is. So, like in the last video, it's a couple of Phillips down here and a Torx screw down here. All right, here's the unit. So, that's the part I replaced last time. It just pops out that way. So, what's weird is the uh, windshield wipers actually they run through the turn indicators. So since this was a problem, it was doing the weird thing with the windshield wipers. All right, so I gotta get this clock spring out here and make sure that this thing is similar. Yep. Yeah, I don't know if I saw that. There's one torx here, one torx down there, and one torx here. All right, that pushes forward, and make sure you get this Phillips here. That way you can get this wires out. Well, I noticed that this thing is different. This, maybe I can take the parts off this one. Like there's an additional connector over here, in this cover, so maybe I need to take this off as part of the process.
All right, so this is what I was saying right here. This actually has the additional connector here, which looks like I can hopefully pop this off. I mean, dude, it's going to be a bad one if I can't. Right. I don't do this one. I can't. I don't want to break it, so I'll just uh, pull off. I don't mean that this one was so much cheaper. Um, because it actually has, doesn't have the PCB on there. But it looks like I can hopefully pull the PCB out of there and transfer it over. I don't know if this thing needs to be, needs to be clocked or, or timed. Mm. Looking for some timing marks. Don't know for sure, so I made a timing mark, just a mark there. I know it matches up with that. So I'm guessing, I don't really know what this thing does or if this thing's even timed or not, but that hole it's probably, it's like sort of like some kind of optical sensor that when it detects a hole, it knows where it's at. So I'm trying to keep it in clock. Yeah, I didn't really think I was going to have to do all this, but I got it out. All right, so, yeah, so this is how you get the thing out. You need these two tabs. Sorry, there's people out there. Uh, I'm not filming a video. Um, so these little two tabs, and this thing pops straight out like that. All right, so that part, I can't get the wheel off. It's almost like they have it soldered in place. I don't know. Like these won't pull off, so I'm just gonna move the whole gear over. All right, so this thing actually has some locking tabs on. I had to cut off, so I'm gonna have to solder that. But yeah, I didn't think there was gonna be this involved. I mean, at least just getting the circuit board transferred over. I don't know what this is for. That clocking because it's not the airbag. It's not the horn. You know, it's not obviously probably not the controls. So it's just some kind of timing here. All right, so I have to send it back in. Let's see. Where's the cover? Here it is. Snap that back in place. Alright, so if you want to save yourself the trouble of that whole PCB movement thing over, um, you know, look for one that actually has this cover. If your actual system needs it, make sure it has this cover on there. So if you see it open like that, then you know it doesn't have this PCB. Um, yeah, obviously this was a, this is, there's a reason why this one was so much cheaper. Like 30 or 40 versus like a few hundred dollars. So, if you don't want to deal with the headache, get the one with the cover on it and the connector. Okay, so I got it back on there. Just gonna put this back on and uh, get screwed back together. All right, I put the bolt back on, but make sure you use a little Loctite because it was actually Loctite on there, the red stuff. But you don't really want to use the red Loctite from the Loctite brand because uh, you'll never get it off without heat. So I'm using blue. All right, so the colors just go back yellow and black. It's always making me a little nervous. It's something like, like a bomb in your hand. All right, let's see this here. So that's the air bar gland right there. That would stay on. And it didn't blow up in my face. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna take this thing for a spin, but out of a scale of one to 10, it's probably about a four to five. Um, you know, dealing with that clock spring, that was sort of a headache, but uh, I mean, like the uh, pulling the PCB off and pulling the, if you don't have the right tools, I'll put a link down below where you can get the right puller, but um, if you don't have the right tools, you're never going to get that steering wheel off. So, yeah, that was probably the hardest thing, getting the steering wheel off. You know, getting the right tool on there to get it pulled off. Um, so it took me about three to four hours. So, but if you had the part without having to, you know, if you had the right steering wheel puller and the, the clock spring that you didn't have to replace the PCB, you could probably get this done in an hour, hour and a half. All right, but it took me like three or four hours because I was troubleshooting stuff. All right, cool. Yeah, lights out. Awesome.